In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the SPO-15 Barroza Radar Warning Receiver, or RWR. We'll also talk about the countermeasure systems at your disposal and how to engage air defense radars with anti-radiation missiles like the KH-58U and the KH-25MPU. I have the lesson paused while we review the RWR and countermeasure systems. You can press L to turn on cockpit lighting. Press the space bar when you're ready to continue. In the bottom right corner of the front dash is the SPO-15 RWR panel. It's the black panel with the aircraft symbol in the center. The light at the very top center of the panel, above the nose of the aircraft, indicates that the SPO-15 has power. The RWR display indicates any threat radars illuminating your aircraft. Information is presented as symbols representing the type and direction to the threat. Six lights at the bottom of the display notify you of the threat radar type. The system provides detection of radar signals between positive and negative 180 degrees in azimuth and positive and negative 30 degrees in elevation. It's important to note that the RWR will only alert your radar guided threats. It will not detect missiles with infrared guidance. For those, you'll need to spot them visually. Press the spacebar to continue. In the very center of the RWR panel, within the aircraft symbol, are the relative elevation lights. If the lower light is lit, the primary threat is below you. If both the top and bottom lights are lit, the threat is roughly co-altitude with you. If only the top light is lit, the threat is above you. Press the space bar to continue. Around about 75% of the aircraft symbol is a ring of lights that indicate the relative detected power of the primary threat radar. The ring of lights generally corresponds to the range of the threat. The more lights, the more close it is. To the right of the aircraft symbol is a single green light. This indicates the relative direction to a detected secondary radar threat. If there is only a single threat detected, as we have now, the secondary and primary will be the same. There can be multiple secondary threats displayed at once. To the right of the secondary threat indication is a larger amber light that indicates the direction to the primary threat. There are 10 such lights that include left and right 10 degrees, 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and left and right rear hemisphere. There can only be one primary threat indicated at once. Currently, you have a primary threat detecting 90 degrees right, in other words, off your right wing. Press the space bar to continue. As I've been talking, you'll probably notice that annoying beeping sound. The sound indicates a detected radar in search mode. You have the option to filter RWR to only detect radars that have locked on to you. Do this by pressing right shift and R now. Good. Now let's press right shift and R again to bring us back to non-filter detection. Along the bottom of the RWR panel is a row of six lights that indicate the general type of radar that the primary threat belongs to. Currently, the far left light is lit with a C beneath it. This corresponds to an AWACS radar detected off your right wing. Press the spacebar to continue. The AWACS will now be replaced by an early warning radar, or EWR. You can see this indicated by the second light from the right with the F being illuminated and the primary threat light is now in your right rear hemisphere. Press the spacebar to continue. We now see the detection of a short-range air defense missile radar. These generally support air defense systems like the Shilka, 206, Roland, and SA-8. The third light from the right with the H below is now lit, and the primary threat light indicates the threat is located 50 degrees to the right of your nose. Eventually, the threat SA-8 will lock onto you, and the center aircraft symbol will have a red circle beneath it. This will be in addition to a steady lock tone. Press the spacebar to continue once you've been locked up. Next we have a medium range radar as indicated by the X light, third from the left. The primary threat has moved to between your 30 and 50 degree left lights, meaning the threat is somewhere between 30 and 50 degrees off the left side of your nose. Medium SAMs include the SA-11, SA-6, and IHAWK. The lock tone can be a bit too loud at times, so try decreasing its volume by pressing right, alt, and comma. Try raising the volume back up now 
by pressing right alt and period. The next primary detection is for a long range SAM like an S300 or a Patriot. As such, we have a three indication light second from the left and our primary threat light is directly ahead of us. Press the spacebar to continue. The final threat type is for an airborne radar as you might find in a fighter. The end light is indicated at the far left of the threat lights. The radar is detected between 10 and 50 degrees off the left side of your nose. Press the spacebar to continue. That should now provide you an overview of how to interpret the RWR panel. You can degrade an enemy unit's lock range by turning on your MPS-40 electronic countermeasure pods if loaded. When ECM is active, it will be broadcasting your presence to everyone. As such, it's best to only turn it on when you're locked up by an enemy radar. We'll make an exception to this training case though and have you turn it on now by pressing E. Take a look at the right wall of the cockpit. You'll see that the ECM light is blinking as the jammer warms up. Once it's a solid light, the ECM jammer is operating. As mentioned earlier, the SPO-15 will give you no warning of being engaged by an infrared guided missile system like the Avenger, Stinger, SA-18, or SA-13, for example. To help reduce the ability of such systems to engage you, it's wise to activate your IR jammer located in the tail of your aircraft. Try this now by pressing left shift and E. When you turned on the IR jammer, the indication light by the landing gear handle in the lower left corner of the front dash becomes illuminated. In addition to ECM and infrared jammers, you also have expendable countermeasures in the form of chaff and flares. Chaff is a bundle of metallic strips that bloom when released. These can decoy the tracking of incoming radar guided missiles. If possible, keep the missile off the left or right wing while dispensing chaff to have the best effect. Try releasing the chaff bundle now by pressing insert. Good. If you spot a missile launch with no corresponding RWR warning, then there's a good chance it's an infrared guided missile. Like chaff, try to get the missile coming to your flight path at a perpendicular angle and release flares. Try releasing some flares now by tapping the delete key a few times. So far, everything we've discussed in this lesson has been defensive in nature, but now we'll shift gears and learn how to attack radar-guided air defense systems. Let's first enter air-to-ground mode by pressing 7. On the center station of your aircraft is hung an L081 Phantasmagoria pod that can detect and classify air defense radars. Go ahead and activate it by pressing I. On the HUD, you now have some new symbology. We have a box with a pipper in the center that we can slew using the comma, forward slash, period, and semicolon keys. In the bottom left corner of the HUD, ETS is shown to indicate that we have the Phantasmagoria pod selected. In the bottom right corner of the HUD, you'll see 58, indicating that the KH-58U anti-radiation missile is selected. The KH-58U is your most capable weapon against enemy radars and will home in on the radar emissions. It has an excellent range of 120 kilometers when launched from high altitude, and it's your weapon of choice against medium and long range surface to air missile sites. It has a 149 kilogram warhead that will destroy any air defense radar. Press the spacebar now to unpause the lesson. Now that we're in pause, I'll activate a medium range SA-6 SAM site directly ahead of us. On the HUD, you'll see its location as a diamond with an SA-6 below it. If the RWR light starts to flash and you hear an interrupted tone, it indicates that a missile has been launched at you. Use the slew keys to move the designation box over the SA-6 diamond and lock it up by pressing enter. Once locked, the target diamond changes to a circle and the launch authorization cue is given. Press and hold the spacebar to launch the missile. Like most weapon technology, you cannot count on it being 100% accurate. 
Additionally, more advanced SAM systems like the Patriot, S-300, and SA-15 are capable of destroying anti-radiation missiles in flight. Given this, you may wish to fire more than one anti-radiation missile at a time at advanced SAM sites. Good hit. That SA-6 radar is destroyed and is no longer being detected on your RWR. The next missile we will use is the KH-25 MPU. This missile uses the same airframe and motor as the KH-25 ML we used earlier, but is fitted with a radar homing seeker. It's much smaller than the KH-58U and only has a range of about 60 kilometers when launched from high altitude. The advantage is that you can load more of them. The KH-25 MPU is best used against short and medium range air defense systems. Press D to select it. I've activated another radar guided SAM site off to your right. Use your RWR to locate the SE-8 radar, lock it up on the HUD, and engage it.
Well done. You've destroyed both radar targets. You can press the escape key now to end the lesson. Fuel 